So whether you're looking to update your estate planning or you're looking to create a whole new estate plan from scratch, uh, it's really important to understand the basics of the process and also the documents. Another really important thing is that, you know, 50% of people in the United States don't have any sort of estate plan. So uh, getting ahead of that is really important. So what is estate planning? Well, generally speaking, estate planning is any document or any action that you take, right, while you're alive to decide how your property, your funds, your houses, whatever it may be, are distributed to your loved ones after you pass away. So for example, an estate plan can consist of just a will, right? Or an estate plan can be a comprehensive set of documents, including a will, a trust, advanced directives, and maybe even some deed work. Uh, it's really important to sit down with an attorney that understands the process to really present you all the options that are available to you. Because one thing to remember, there is no one size fits all when it comes to estate planning. The most common form of estate planning that most people are familiar with is a will. A will is basically an instruction manual that a judge reads and uses to distribute all your assets. What that means is that if you have a will, you have to go through the probate process and you have to submit that will to the court so they can hold it safe and then eventually use the instructions in there to distribute the assets and the properties that you may have. So in every will, there's going to be someone called the personal representative nominated in that document. That's the person that's in charge of managing the estate. Other states call it an executor or, or an authorized person, right? Here in Florida, that personal representative works together with the court and their attorney to really move the process forward, right? Uh, they're the ones that deal with distributing assets, you know, using court orders to make transfers to beneficiaries. They're the ones that deal with creditors. If someone files a claim against the estate, they're the ones that object to it, right, together with the attorneys. They're really the ones that are in charge of the estate, right? They are the ones that will manage everything after you pass away. Another really important part of your estate plan is what's known as advanced directives. These are documents that really help you decide or nominate people to take care of you while you're alive. So it's almost like in-life estate planning, if you want to think of it that way. Those documents are most commonly your durable power of attorney, your healthcare surrogate, your living will, and your HIPAA release, right? Uh, their durable power of attorney is really a document that empowers someone to make property and financial decisions on your behalf. You can get really granular, really specific with what you want them to be able to have the power to do, or you could just give them a general, you know, green light to do whatever they need to do, right? On the healthcare side, we have the healthcare surrogate. This allows someone that you nominate or a group of people working together to make decisions on your behalf for your healthcare and to give consent for procedures like surgeries or treatments, right? The really cool thing about that document is that it only comes into play if you can't make those decisions yourself. So no one can come and say, oh, well, you know, I want to, I want this person to get a surgery if that person is conscious and in their right mind. The living will is another really important document. It's that famous document that people talk about where they want to be kept off the machines, right? They want to be kept off a ventilator. This is the document that basically says, hey, if I'm in an end of life scenario or a terminal illness, right? Or an end stage condition, I don't want life prolonging treatment to be applied to me. Very important document. A lot of people, you know, regret not having it. It saves families a lot of grief and a lot of strife. The other really important document that uh, we talk about is a HIPAA release. This is for your protected health information. It's an authorization allowing someone in your family or a loved one, a trusted person to be able to access your medical records or any other type of protected health information that may be necessary for anything else, right? Very useful document uh, and it saves people a lot of headache when you know the person has filled it out. Another really popular estate planning tool is a revocable trust. It's really useful for families who have minor kids or families and individuals that are looking to avoid probate. A revocable trust is basically just a structure that you can put assets into, whether they be property, whether they be you know insurance policies, or they can even be just you know bank accounts and stuff like that. The revocable trust actually lays out a roadmap of how those assets are going to be distributed should something happen to you, right? So for example, if I have two minor kids, if they receive any funds over the amount of $15,000 total, they're going to end up in a guardianship. With a revocable trust, we can ensure that they don't get any of that money until they're mature enough to be able to use it. So for example, we can spread it out to 50, you know, 25 years old, 30 years old, and 35 years old, all the while 
that you know that time period is passing, they're still able to access those funds for their health, their education, so for school and dorms and stuff like that, their maintenance, like paying insurances or paying whatever it may be, and their support. So those really important payments that need to be made uh, would still be made if something happened to whoever drafted the trust or sorry, whoever create uh, signed the trust, right? Um, even if you don't have minor kids, it's a really important tool to avoid probate. Probates take a long time, anywhere from nine months to a year and a half, depending on the jurisdiction and the type of assets we're talking about. With a trust, you know, you really avoid that long process. You avoid the cost of having an attorney represent you during the probate process. So it's really a win-win regardless of whether or not you have minor kids. What type of assets can you put in a trust? Anything. Properties, businesses like LLCs and corporations, uh, bank accounts. You can put bank accounts in the trust. You can have insurance policies and retirement accounts flow into the trust, all to be managed in one place by yourself during life, and then after you pass away, by someone called the successor trustee. So a family member, another trusted person that's going to be able to maintain those assets, manage them and distribute them to their eventual beneficiaries should something happen to you. One of the most common questions I get is, do I need estate planning, right? And the answer is everyone can probably benefit from it, right? Whether you have minor kids or whether you're you know, alone, you're not married or don't have any relationships, it's still important to make sure that your assets are distributed the way you want them to be so you don't have a court decide or you don't have the law decide how it gets distributed. Another common question I get is, if I have a will, will my loved ones need to go through probate? And the answer is yes, right? A will is basically an instruction manual that only a judge can really interpret and follow, right? So if you do have just a will, you are ensuring that you have to go to probate. If that's something you'd like to avoid, there's other options we can talk about. Another common scenario I run into a lot is where someone will tell me, hey, I only have a house and a few bank accounts. What sort of estate planning do I need? Well, in that case, we would probably do what's known as a ladybird deed, right? That would allow you to avoid the probate process with one single document. It's not a you know, one size fits all magic silver bullet, but it does help a lot of people. And when it comes to your bank accounts, we'll teach you how to title them to avoid probate as well. Another really common and important question I get is what would happen to my kids, my minor children, if I pass away? Well, you got to bring that to our attention, to your estate planning attorney's attention so we can address it and make sure that, you know, it lays out in your estate plan who's going to be managing their assets, right? Your assets for their benefit and who's going to be taking care of them, where they're going to be living, who's going to be taking them to school, that type of stuff, right? You have to worry about both the property and the person, and we can help you address that with our estate plans. A question I get a lot with potential new clients is uh, they want to know how much protection they can get from the estate planning that we do, specifically our revocable trusts. And with revocable trusts, there's not a lot of protection there. Really, the protection that you get is already built into stuff like your LLCs that you may have or your homestead. And we can help you structure those things to maximize that protection.